Welcome to Square Wing Games. My name is Exonovan, and this is my road to completion guide for Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. In this series, I will show you how to unlock every single trophy and achievement this game has to offer, and I really hope you enjoy the run. I have two quick announcements before we get started. Number one, always make sure you're checking down below in the description of each one of the videos in the series. I will have a full video timeline waiting for you down there in case you want to skip around to a specific part of the guide. Number two, always make sure that you're reading my pinned comment down below. It'll be the very first comment in the comment section. If I have to make a correction with the guide, I will always list that correction in my pinned comment. If this is the first time you've ever watched one of my guides, just know that I monitor my comments 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I try to be as quick as possible with my replies. So if you have a question about this guide or any of the other guides on my channel, be sure to leave that down in the comments and I'll get back to you as quick as possible. Enjoy the guide. So you can see that I'm going through my options menu making a few adjustments. I've turned off effects like film grain and motion blur. I'm just not a fan of those effects when it comes to games. I'm also turning down the music. That's mainly for copyright guys. With it being on YouTube and everything, I know the algorithm catches copyrighted music all the time. With it being a Star Wars game, I'm just turning that off. There's enough ambient noise in this game to where you really don't need the music. And when it comes to the difficulty, I set it to story mode. There is no trophy for completing this game on the hardest difficulty. So depending on how long you want this experience to be for you will determine which difficulty you want to use. I would highly encourage you guys to set it to story mode if you want to make this trophy hunt as efficient as possible. So this is the first area of the game. It's called the ship breaking yard. It serves as your tutorial. You're going to learn how to jump and climb and use the force and stuff like that. Uh, basically, if you've played Uncharted, Tomb Raider, even games like God of War, you're going to be very familiar with the control scheme for this game. And that's the perfect segue into the first aspect of this game that I want to cover with you guys. There are a ton of collectibles. So if you've played games like Tomb Raider and God of War, maybe you love the action, you love the story, but you hate the fact that you have to grind through all these collectibles to get your platinum or your thousand gamer score points, this may not be the game for you. Now with that said, I have routed the collectibles into the guide to make it as streamlined as possible. So even if you're not a fan of collectibles when it comes to games, this will not be a long experience for you guys as long as you follow my guide. My total time to get my platinum in this game was 14 hours and four minutes, and that included the cutscenes. So if you follow my guide step by step, this is a game that you can knock out on a weekend, even if you're not a fan of all those collectibles. Another aspect of this game that might upset some of you is the fact that you cannot fast travel. There are meditation spots along the way where you can rest and respawn enemies, very similar to a game like Dark Souls. You just can't fast travel in between those meditation spots. And that means if you miss a collectible, you've already made it back to your ship, but the collectible is on the other side of the planet, you will have to run out that path to be able to get that collectible and then run all the way back to your ship. And even though we're going to be opening up shortcuts along the way, it can still take 10 to 30 minutes of backtracking to find that collectible that you've missed and make it back to the ship. So it's extremely important that you guys are following every single step of this guide. You do not want to miss a collectible and waste that time. Like I said at the beginning of this video, make sure that you're checking down below in the description. I will have a full video timeline. It serves as a checklist. Make sure that you guys have everything on that list before you move on to the next episode. For those of you that support me on Patreon, your RTC visual guide and workbook are already available, so you guys can use that for your checklist. Another thing that I'm going to do is show you all the collectibles in game at the end of each one of the episodes in the series. I will also have them listed down below in the description of the video. So just make sure you take your time at the end of each one of the episodes in this series. Make sure that you have everything on the list. If you don't, stop. Do not move to the next episode. Let me know immediately so I can route you to that collectible that you're missing so you can always stay in step with the guide. And I really want to stress this point, your trophy and achievement hunting experience when it comes to this game is going to come down to the collectibles. The combat is simple, especially if you're playing on the story mode difficulty, you're going to be given a free pass to get through every single one of the combat situations. They're extremely easy. It's the collectibles. You have to pay close attention to the details of this guide to make your trophy and achievement hunting experience as efficient as possible. I spent 20 days preparing this guide so I know this game very well. In fact, the gameplay that you're watching now is my fourth platinum. So if you guys have a question, chances are I've got the answer. 
And the best way for me to find the solution to your problem will be the collectibles. Think of the collectibles like breadcrumbs. As long as I know which collectibles you don't have, I can get you to where you need to be, okay? Not only to pick that collectible up, which is for a trophy, but also to work on your map exploration percentage. We have to have every map or every planet complete 100%. So I was very strategic in the way that I set this guide up. I know that if you're picking up certain collectibles, you're also increasing your map exploration percentage. So if you hit me up in a comment and you say, Xonovant, I'm 4% short on this particular planet, what do I do? The first thing I'm going to ask you is which collectible are you missing? Because in most cases, you're missing a collectible, you find that collectible, you'll get the map exploration percentage, and you'll be done with that planet. Now sometimes this won't work. You'll actually have all the collectibles, and you'll swear that you've walked across every inch of the map, but you're still short 3-5 to five percentage points on having a full map clear. I've played the game four times okay on my first three playthroughs it happened to me too I was always short a few percentage points and I had to find and identify that room so I could pick those points up so chances are I can lead you straight to it so again this is not a difficult platinum the gameplay is not difficult the details will be the thing that you guys struggle with the most you have to pay close attention to everything that i'm showing you everything that i'm telling you and go very slow with this game and you'll have no problem completing it 100 percent that's about all i can say about the gameplay for now we do have a boss fight coming up in a few minutes i'll hop back in with commentary and we'll talk more about combat i'm slipping no don't let go i, I can't hold on bro no now. Got a stowaway. Hey, you don't need to call this in. Shouldn't have come here. You hear that over the comm? The Jedi? Stay sharp. They won't get past us. It's a traitor. Blast them. Uh, Hit him already. Thank <laughs> you. 
I could take him myself. Stay back. Just stay back. Get to the front, stop the train. Oh no! Need cover! Now! Faster! He's here! I'm ready for your trick. Shot the coupling out. Gotta get down. Ah! Ah! No, no, no. Ah! Whoa, this is bad. Only way is up.
So the combat in this game is extremely easy on story mode difficulty, okay? I'm gonna show you a strategy here in a few seconds. You can keep this strategy up for the entire game and it will take you through like 95% of every combat sequence, every boss fight with no problem. So all we have to do is press R1 on our controller to slow the enemy down. Then we're gonna run in there, get a few cheap shots, backflip out of the way, wait for our force meter, which is at the bottom of the screen to replenish so that we can use force slow again. Now the trick is to not get greedy. You only wanna hit one time and then backflip out of the way. Now granted, if you guys are playing on the story mode difficulty, which is what you're seeing now, you could swing a lot more times and get away with it. But I'm trying to show you guys the safest way to get through these combat situations. And one swing is good enough to do some damage, then keep you guys safe at the same time. Remember, you can only use your force powers when the meter at the bottom of the screen is full enough. See how it's empty now? Now it's gonna start replenishing. Boom, it turns that bright teal color. When you see that, you can use force slow by hitting R1, go in there and get those hits, backflip out of the way, Rinse and repeat until you defeat the enemy. After you board the ship, you'll get the trophy, the Mantis. That'll pop on screen in just a second. Then I want you to head to the front and talk to Grease, then play the musical instrument. After that, we'll be taken to the planet Bogano and we can start exploring. Grease? Not now, I got work to do. May the force be with you. So the first thing that I want you to notice is the bar that's filling up at the top of the screen. You can see that once it filled up all the way, we picked up a skill point. We need 50 skill points to be able to unlock all the Jedi skills in the game, and that's of course gonna get us a trophy. Now there's several ways to get experience points in this game. Of course, killing enemies and bosses will net you experience points. You can also find echoes. You can scan things in the environment with BD1, which you'll meet here in just a second. There's many ways to get experience points. If you guys follow my gameplay, all the way through to the very end, you will have just enough experience points to get all 50 skills with very little farming. In fact, there's only gonna be one spot in the guide where we're gonna farm. We're gonna be trophy hunting in the process. It's only gonna take maybe 10 minutes and you guys will have the 50 skill points that you need to unlock all the Jedi skills and get that trophy. Now, as part of our tutorial, the game forces us to pick up our first skill called Overhead Slash, so make sure that you grab that. That'll leave you with zero skill points, and as soon as you exit the meditation spot, you'll meet BD-1. Hold on. You know the Jedi? What do you know? Wait, hold on. So like I was telling you before, we have to explore every one of the planets 100% to be able to pop a trophy. And the way that we keep track of that is BD1's hollow map. Now you'll be given a few tutorials while you're here on Bagano that will teach you how to use and read the hollow map. I do not like the hollow map. So I'm not gonna be showing you the hollow map for the majority of the rest of this guide. Now to some of you, that's gonna make you extremely annoyed, but trust me, the hollow map is very confusing once you get on planets like Zepho and stuff like that. It will be more confusing for me to pull that guide up every five seconds to show you where I am than for you guys to just follow the gameplay, okay? Navigate using the gameplay that I'm showing you guys, trust me, that is a much better experience than trying to follow this hollow map. 
Now there will be times where I pull the hollow map up. Anytime you see me pull the hollow map up, I am wanting you to look at the map exploration percentage in the bottom left hand side of the screen. You can't see it on this hollow map now because this is just part one of the tutorial, but in a few seconds you guys will get another tutorial and you'll be able to see that map exploration percentage, the number of chests you have, and the number of secrets that you found. I'll talk more about that once we get to the next hollow map tutorial, but for now I want you guys to just follow my gameplay. If you look in the bottom left hand side of the screen you'll see that bar. There's no number to the left of that bar once we pick up our stem from bd1 it'll have a two by it that lets you know that you have two stems that's basically how you heal in the game all you have to do is press down on the d-pad you can heal yourself at any time we have to collect 10 total stems in the game to be able to pop a trophy hold on one. i'm coming pretty brave you okay okay well first we gotta figure out a way out of this place uh bd that's a little small for me don't worry i'll find my own way out tight fit but this should work So now we have to find eight more stem canisters so we can pop a trophy. You will find all of those stem canisters inside of gold chest located in the environment. Now there's two things I want you to notice here. Number one, I cut this rope as a shortcut. You can see in the left hand side of the screen it says shortcut unlocked. Across the gap there, I don't know if you guys saw it, but there was a chest. It was a black chest. I'm going to be skipping chest for now, okay? Make sure you guys do the same thing. It's going to be very tempting to open those chests up, but trust me, we're going to wait to come back to Bagano later on and get all the chest. So this is the second hollow map tutorial that I was telling you guys about. It's just going to show you here the difference between block paths and available paths obviously the block paths are red the available paths are green if you guys are coming up short on your expiration percentage and we can't pinpoint it down to a collectible that you're missing uh, the next step is going to be to find out if you have a red block path on your hollow map if you do then that's where you need to go to be able to pick up that percentage that you need to fully explore that planet if you pause the video right now you'll see in the bottom left hand side of the screen it said abandoned workshop it had the exploration percentage, the number of chests, and the secrets. In the top left, it said Bogano, which is the entire planet, and then it had the chests and the secrets. So you have two things that you can look at. The top left represents the entire planet. The bottom left is the current area that you're in. So anytime you see me pull up a hollow map for the rest of this guide, I want you focused on the bottom left hand side of the screen. I want you focused on the exploration percentage. So what I'll do is I'll pull up a hollow map. It might say 20% and then I'll walk into an area and then I'll pull the hollow map up again. Well, then it might say 25%. And that's what I want you focused on because there's going to be certain parts of this guide where I'm not doing commentary, but I'm pulling up a hollow map. And I want you to know what to focus on when that time comes. Now, there's two key things happening right now. Number one, I'm scanning the copy seed. You can see that new terrarium seed acquired. The scan was blue. Now I'm scanning the enemy that I just killed and the scan is red. Also notice after I scanned that bog rat on the left hand side of the screen it said tactical guide updated bog rat. And now of course I'm in my tactical guide and you can see that I've gotten credit for scanning the bog rat. 
The reason why you need to understand this is because there's 45 enemies that we have to scan with BD1 to be able to pop a trophy. But that does not mean that you have to physically scan 45 enemies. Some of the enemies you will get credit for as a scan simply by defeating them. The key is to always look on the left hand side of the screen. If it says tactical guide updated and then it gives you the name of the enemy that you just defeated, that lets you know that it's a part of the 45 scans that we need to pop the trophy. Now the blue scan that you saw earlier was for the terrarium seed. There are 10 seeds that we have to find in this game. We take those back to Grease, he puts them in the terrarium on the mantis. When they're fully grown, we get another trophy. So anytime you see me scan something with BD1 and it's a blue light, that's an environmental scan. I'm scanning for terrarium seeds, encrypted logs, force echoes, all of these are for other trophies, okay? If it's a red light, it's for enemy scans. I wanted you guys to be very aware of that difference before we get too deep into this guide. Now, some of you may be nervous about the enemy scans because I just talked about uh, some of them are gonna be automatic as you kill enemies, which means you're not gonna see a red light. And then some of them you will have to use BD1 to get the official scan. The simplest way to think about it is kill what I kill, and scan what I scan. That's simple as it gets. If you're killing everything that I'm killing, and every time you see me use BD1 and you see the red light, you're scanning, you will have no problem getting all 45 enemies filled up in your tactical guide and popping that trophy before the end of the game. Now, when it comes to your environmental scans, they play out the exact same way. Some of them you will have to press down on the D-pad, see the blue light, and officially get that scan using BD1. Some of them will automatically happen as you play through the story and do specific things. Once again, as long as you're doing exactly what I'm doing, you will get credit for all the scans. In fact, we have another enemy scan coming up right here. Okay, we're gonna kill the enemy. Notice in the bottom of the screen, it says scan, press down on the D-pad. The blue light turns to a red light, and then look on the left, tactical guide updated, Ogdo. Now if you go into your options menu, into your tactical guide, you will see Bograt and Ogdo for this planet, okay? That's two out of the 45 enemy scans that you need to pop that trophy. Another thing you want to get in the habit of doing is killing all the enemies that you come in contact with. This will save you from having to farm as much once you get to the end of the game. This will also ensure that you're picking up all your enemy scans because you're not skipping any of the enemies in the game. You're killing everything. So you have an opportunity to scan the enemies using BD1's red light, or you have the opportunity to get in the scan automatically simply by killing the enemies. Now that you have the wall run ability, you can make your way to the ancient vault. There'll be a few cutscenes that you have to watch. Once those cutscenes are over, I'll come back in with commentary and explain encrypted logs and how they relate to Cordova's journey. Racy there. Oh, it's on. We're not finished yet. Okay, okay, you probably would have won. Probably. Amazing. BD? Hey, you want to meet some uh, friends? Now, a few things happen here, and I want you to notice these. Number one, you're going to open up a new destination called Zepho. That's a new planet that we can explore. You're going to get a trophy a long time ago, but keep looking on the left hand side of the screen. It's going to say multiple entries. It's super quick because I have a cut here where I'm outside at the meditation point. I've just set up a save. Basically, anytime you guys hit a meditation point and you hit square, you're setting up a save. Okay, so make sure you set up a save there and then follow the gameplay. But let's talk about what it means when it says multiple entries. So you just got credit from multiple entries at once. And instead of the game listing them out for you individually, it just gave you a generic notification that said multiple entries. And this is where things get very confusing. If you go into the timestamps of this video, 
you'll see that at the 28 minute 52 second mark i had you guys getting credit for a log secrets of the vault you did get credit for that it just didn't show up on screen because remember we also unlocked zepho and that was a data point so you got credit for both of those at the same time so that's where the confusion might set in okay anytime you're unsure go ahead go into your options menu into your data bank or your tactical guide or whatever and check to make sure you have exactly what i have listed down in the timestamps go ahead and kill this enemy and then just follow my gameplay we're going to meet up with cordova again we're going to get credit for another log this one's called discovering dathomir there are a total of 19 encrypted logs that we have to find in this game. Once we find them all, we'll get credit for another trophy. Now notice what happens here. Keep looking on the left hand side of the screen. A data bank updated Cordova log discovering Dathomir. See that time it listed it specifically because we only had one entry to deal with. Anytime you have multiple entries, you're not going to see that specific data bank. You'll have to just verify it using your options menu, checking the data bank and comparing that to my timestamps down below. Go ahead and run back to the ship. There'll be a few cutscenes that you have to watch. After the cutscenes are over, I'll come back in with a commentary and we'll go through our episode checklist. Hey, BD-1. You passed the test. We're in. Dathomir is FO. It's your choice. Now this is not as extensive as it'll be once we hit future episodes because we haven't done a lot of exploring, but I'll always do it in the same format. I'll always show you the abilities first, both for Cal and BD1, and then we'll hit the skill tree. I'll show you what skills we have. You can see at the top, it's all uh, separated, guys. Abilities, customization, data bank, and technical guide. So we're just gonna go through every one of the categories to make sure that everything checks out. Remember, you can use the checklist down below or the video for reference. Once you have everything that I have, travel over to Dathomir and set up a save on the mantis i'll show you that in the gameplay i'll meet up with you guys in episode two we're going to pick up the double bladed lightsaber on dathomir hopefully you guys have enjoyed the very first episode in the series i'll see you in the next one be good
degrees. What's this thing? What? You've never seen a terrarium before? Sure, but don't they usually have plants in them? Well, I've been a bit busy hauling you around the galaxy, but you know, you could pay me back with some seeds. I thought you hated nature. When it's out there, you betcha. But when it's behind a comfortably thick wall of embarred glass, that's perfection. All right, I'll see if I can find any. Where are we headed? Setting course for that. Wait a minute. You want to go to Dathomir? Ah, coming up on our creepy destination. Grab some seat, kid. Cal, be careful here. This is a dead, dangerous place. Hold that thought. If you enjoy my videos and would like to support my work, you can do so at Patreon. I offer a ton of rewards from behind the scenes coverage, RTC visual guides and workbooks, even early video access. Monthly pledges start at $1 a month and for those of you who support me already, I greatly appreciate it.